Hello friends, my name is Karina. This is my YouTube channel, Karina Marie Handmade, and I'm here to share with you all the things crafty going on in my life. So here on this channel, you'll find mostly knitting, some crochet, a lot of fiber, spinning, weaving, sewing, and quilting. Welcome to the Karina Marie Handmade YouTube channel. Thanks for clicking. Um, this is my first video. Um, so today I'll be sharing all things crafty with you as part of my first knitting podcast episode. Um, but throughout the weeks and the months as I produce more content, um, it could be from knitting, crocheting, to spinning and weaving, um, more of the fiber arts, to sewing and quilting, or whatever crafty hobby I pick up next. There really is no limit. That limit does not exist. I'm um, so happy to share that with you. Over the last few months, I've been really um, thinking about starting a channel, and my one goal for creating this channel was to upload a video before January 31st, 2021. So here we are, about a few days before that self, you know, produced deadline and we're gonna see how this goes and I'm looking forward to connecting with um, whoever may be viewing and just would love to create this place to share my craftiness um, and connect with you all so thanks again for stopping by um, happy to have you here and hope that you stick around um, in whatever means that is um, Karina Marie handmade on YouTube as well as Karina Marie handmade on Instagram um, you can also find me on Ravelry is Karina Marie HM um, so yes I don't post a ton of project pages on Ravelry um, it's more so a place for me to find patterns but if you know over time it's easier as I'm talking about the finished objects I've been working on to start creating those I definitely will take that into consideration and work on that um so first off I will show you and talk a little bit about my sweater um so this piece is the Paloma sweater um, which is a free pattern by Espace Tricot and it is knit in DK this is an autumn and indigo um, yarn on a DK base. I think it's their classic DK. Don't remember the colorway, but I will link it below and the link to purchase this color if you love it as much as I do in the description box below, as well as anything else I can link. I am big on links and sharing and pointing you all in the right direction if you have any question about anything that I'm sharing or talking about. Um, so if you respond well to that, great. And if you still have questions after checking out that description box, just let me know. So without further ado, I will get into some finished objects. So um, I have one pair of socks and a whole bunch of yarn that I've spun since January 1st. So I figured today would be a good um, kind of point to start the FOs and the whips. And then from here on out, you'll see more and more. So first up, we have a pair of socks. Um, so this is pattern by Summer Lee Designs. It's called Mermaid Avenue and I hope you love the colors as much as I do. I thought they were perfect for a pattern called Mermaid Avenue um, and the scale pattern really brings out the greens and blues and purples for this. So this is knit in hand dyed yarn. Um, this was dyed by Red Door Fiber Studio, Kate, um, in a collection she ran, I think over the summer, maybe around August, September, her Studio Ghibli collection. Um, I believe this teal is called Shallows and the main color is Toy Boat. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> if you know the colorways. Um, so I thought 
gorgeous pattern. They still need to be blocked. I have misplaced my sock blockers. Uh, not really sure where they are, but as soon as I find them, I will block these and start wearing them. Um, so like I mentioned, I will show you some of the fiber that I have spun. Um, so I'm recently a wheel spinner. Um, I started out, I believe last year with a drop spindle and roving. Um, and since I purchased a Spinolution wheel from one of my friends, Amanda, who is the um, creator behind Melanated Boho Bay, um, she, you know, has just inspired me so much and I've become um, more actively spinning on the wheel and everything. So this is a skein I wound up a few weeks ago. It is a gorgeous green and as you get to know me a little bit more I'm sure you'll understand what my favorite color palette is. And if you see behind me here in my stash lots of greens, lots of blues. I think the greens bring out my hair very well and sometimes you just you gotta embrace those things um, about yourself and really tie into what you feel best in and for me it's definitely green green is my color green is always where i kind of merge to if i'm ever going shopping or knitting buying yarn i don't know what percentage of the yarn that i own is green but i know it's a lot and that's okay so let's get back to this this is a gorgeous emerald green with some neons and oranges i plied it with a a gold thread and uh, yeah it has a lot of shape and a lot of color so definitely a favorite of mine um, the next seven skeins I will share with you are part of Amanda's advent so a few months ago she released um, different advent themes one was a birthday theme this one was a Minnie Mouse theme, um, so kind of inspired by all of Minnie Mouse's different outfits, whether that's an Epcot or Magic Kingdom or, um, you know, different countries that she visits, she has different outfits. And I had a blast spinning these up, kind of small bats, I think they were two ounces. And I found my groove in terms of what style I like, and that is a core spun yarn spiral plied with a metallic thread so you'll see these are all spun the same and i'm sure as i get more comfortable with spinning i'll find some different techniques that i love but i'm happy with this so far so this has been set so i soaked it and dried it so this one has a little bit more bounce than the other ones i'll show you but this gorgeous purple and pink a little bit of blue peeking in there super fun so I love that one. Next up we have this one. And I don't remember the names or the places that they are supposed to represent. So apologies for that. This one is a nice black with green. I applied it with a teal to bring out some of those pops of blue. This one is purple and orange. And the ones I'm showing you now haven't been set, so they're not as bouncy as that first purple one I shared with you. Um, this is a pink and a teal. Again, plied with a nice blue thread to kind of bring out that color right there. This one, a whole bunch of pinks and purples, with a little bit of orange. Last but not least, we have a black base with deep reds. This one was fun to spin. So, not all of my hand spun collection, but kind of the recent ones that I've spun um, that need to be set. And then uh, we've got to find projects for those. Um, so next up, let's talk about whips so a few days ago before i sat down to film this 
I wanted to clear out my whip bin. Um, so as you can see, it's this bin. I keep this on the floor next to the couch. So whenever I sit down and watch TV or Netflix, it's there waiting for me and I can pick up kind of one of the many projects that are in here. Um, and like I said, I went through it a few days ago, frogged a few things that I started over a year ago that I really wasn't loving. One being an Anil Chick Swan Show. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and another scarf here and there. Kind of some things I've started a few years ago. So wanted to clear this out, start fresh with this podcast so you can follow the journey of the things that I'm working on and kind of watch them go from yarn to garment. So we'll talk about the first thing in here. Um, the biggest of which is this pixelated Cardi. This is a pattern by Knit Collage. If you guys haven't heard of Knit Collage, I highly suggest that you follow um, their Instagram account and get to know their beautiful yarns and their patterns. If you are a chunky knitter and you like chunkier garments or you are used to knitting and fingering or DK and you want to kind of expand, um, Knit Collage is a great place to start. Um, Amy, the owner, has a great team behind her creating a bunch of patterns and they do knit alongs every six months so twice a year and it's a great opportunity to join a community and learn some new techniques um so this yarn i think i joined the knit along maybe in spring or definitely fall of 2018 i joined um and i have a cardigan and a shawl that i've made so this is my third knit collage piece um, so it's a cropped cardigan, which I have finished the bottom, started on one sleeve, and then need to pick up stitches for the other sleeve. Um, now, colors I'm using, this yarn is Knit Collage. So this is their French vanilla colorway on their Spun Cloud, which is their most popular yarn. It is a thick and thin yarn that is spun, let's see, see that with a gold Stellina so this is all I have left I do need to pick up a new skein before I can finish this cardigan so it's kind of on a break until I get more yarn and then the contrast color I'm using is a hand spun yarn again by my friend Amanda of melanated boho bay here is her tag, her logo. And this is blue. So blues and greens, like I mentioned before, my favorite colors. So I saw these on her website, had to grab all of them. I think I ended up getting about 180 yards worth. So a few, few skeins of these um, and coupled it very nicely with my knit collage yarn and it's beautiful. So. I hope to continue knitting knit collage patterns. They're great for hand spun. So as I spin my own yarn, kind of incorporating that with um, knit collage's patterns, perfect harmony. That's how I always like to see it. All right. So not a whole ton in terms of garments. Um, next project I have is a sock project, which I started yesterday and I haven't knit a ton of socks and I know by no means think I am a fast sock knitter but I'm already on the heel and this is six inches um, 60 rows and this is a basic vanilla sock it is the I'm so basic sock by summer Lee design so another summer Lee designs pattern um, this one is actually free so if you're interested in just a vanilla sock or you haven't ever knit socks before, highly suggest that you pick it up and learn some different things. Um, I knit with nine inch circulars, so I have um, my front stitches on hold and my heel stitches. Of course, I started a row and didn't finish, but I knit on 
I think these are US 1 2.25 needles. Um, with most projects, I find my gauge is a little bit looser than the pattern calls for. Um, so I normally always size down, like the sweater I size down a needle size, and most things I size down um, just, you know, so I know I'll use a little bit less yarn if I'm still at the right size and kind of patrol it that way. Um, but with socks, you know, I'm comfortable with this and don't like them too, too tight, but I'm loving. It's a blank, you know, basic sock. Um, the yarns I'm using, green. <laughs> These are leftovers from my Find Your Fade shawl by Andrea Mowry that I knit I think two years ago at this point. I have a ton of leftovers. Some of them are up here. You probably can't see them um, in, you know, greens to light greens to this color was in it. So I pulled the lightest one for the sock as my contrast color for the cuffs, toes, and um, heels. So loving this. And I have this in my handmade project bag. So this was my first prototype of a prototype of a project bag ever. And I'm working on adding more to my shop. So if you like Rifle Paper Co. prints or are a big fan of florals, you are in good company. That is kind of a kind of my look and, and the things that I gravitate to the most. Um, this is my Notions pouch. It matches that knitting bag and there is a ton in here. I stuff a lot of stuff in here. So if you're ever interested in knowing what I keep in my Notions pouch, I'd love to do a video for you guys about that. There's probably like five pairs of scissors in here, like a hundred stitch markers, not exaggerating. Um, my Chiagu twist minis, my nine inch circular knitting needles. Um, not a big fan of magic loop. I know a ton of people are. Um, I just could never get into it. I didn't like the way that I had to split my stitches in half and the nine inches, as long as I have the two inch needle length, um, I'm, I'm good. I can knit comfortably with them and it's not too small for my hands. So I'm loving that whip. And then I got two more things to show you. Um, so this isn't a totally robust podcast, but um, these are sock sets that I am hoping to knit up next. Um, so I have the patterns, I think I'm gonna knit with them and I'd love to show you the colors so you know what to expect. And so the first sock set is in Olin Gras hand dyed in New Hampshire. This is a 7525 base in the colorway Arctic Ice. So the main color is this icy blue and the contrast color is a darker blue. So I'm excited to make these. I think they are going to become a sock pattern that has waves in it. I can't remember the name, but I'll link it down below um, and share with you next time once I start making them. And then the second sock set I have is a set dyed by Explorer Knits and Fibers in Lavendula and Lichen. So the base color is this purple lavender with green speckles which purple is kind of out of my comfort zone but i figured they were super cute and don't worry the contrast color is green so that's why we love it so that is going to be a great set i think i'm going to do something on a sock with a cable up the side i love cables i'm a big fan of braided cables um those i don't know they just they're just pretty to me. So we love those. Um, and yes, that's all I have for you today. I know this was a short episode, um, not a ton to share, but 
Um, just wanted to sit down and record this and start our journey on YouTube with recording and getting more comfortable in front of the camera. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the little bit that I did share and I would love for you to introduce yourself and you know just say hi, your name, where you're coming from, where you're watching from. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that I live in New York City and I've been here for a few years now and it's a great place to to be. It's very cold, of course, in January. So, you know, just looking outside at the pigeons flying around and uh, hopefully we didn't hear too many cars on the street that were a little loud. Um, but yes, tell me where you're coming from, what your favorite thing to knit is. Um, are you a sock knitter primarily? Do you like shawls? Do you like um, sweaters, hats? Um, other things. I started out on my knitting, you know, we'll call it a career <laughs> a few years ago with chunky knits, um, chunky yarn, you know, line brand thick and quick. Um, had an Etsy shop where I was selling finished goods, went to career, career fairs, <laughs> went to craft fairs and sold scarves and hats and headbands and loved that. And then in January of 2018, I went to Vogue Knitting Live, New York, um, which was a great experience. And I, you know, found the the fade pattern by Andrea Mowry, the What the Fade. And I was like, all right, today we're gonna find my fade. And I found a fade, I knit that up, and that was my first experience. My first fairy weight project, I went straight to brioche. I don't know what I was thinking and I guess that's the thing I wasn't thinking because I was a newbie knitter. A newbie lighter weight knitter we'll say. Um, first time doing brioche so I think it was well. I didn't check gauge, didn't know a lot about gauge with fingering weight yarn so that shawl came out gigantic and I barely wear it if, if I ever do. It could probably be served as a blanket better than it is a shawl. Um, and then from there just kept picking up different projects and shawls and hats and you know last year I started socks and sweaters and it's it's been fun testing my skills and my capabilities and of course I'm good at acquiring yarn so this whole bookcase behind me is filled to the brims with yarn um, mostly fingering weight yarn some DK um, you know green you can see the green yarns and it's everywhere but um i hope one day to do a stash tour for you and a tour of my current garments everything that i have knitted um so if you'd be interested in seeing that let me know um and just ask any questions anything that you're interested in um tell me if you enjoyed this video and if you're gonna stick around for the next one i would really appreciate it and i would love to have you um so yes i Thank you again for your time and I hope you have a great day or a great week whenever you're watching this and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye.